Hi folks, thanks so much for clicking play. I'm Miles Bloom coming to you from BizNow headquarters in New York and welcome to BizNow TV. For those who missed our soft launch pilot two weeks back, this marks the beginning of BizNow's newest news offering, a mercifully short video recap of the last week's biggest stories in the commercial real estate industry nationwide. It's the middle of May, which means the first quarter of 2015 is officially behind us, and we've now had enough time to dive into the numbers and see exactly how the market is performing. Several reports came out this week to that end, so let's kick things off with a look at this week's most intriguing numbers. The first big number this week, 45%. That's the increase in dollar volume of commercial real estate transactions in Q1 of 2015, according to Real Capital Analytics. That marks the fastest start to a year since 2007. The big jump was largely driven by the sales of multiple buildings or even entire companies, and that trend is continuing so far in Q2. A massive pipeline of deals has many experts around the industry expecting the second quarter of 2015 to be one of the biggest on record. Leading the way is the recent $23 billion acquisition of General Electric's real estate portfolio by Blackstone and Wells Fargo. Now, dollar volume wasn't the only significant number pulled from Q1. The next one, 11%. That is the percentage above peak pricing in 2007 reached by the U.S. Composite Index through the first quarter, according to CoStar. Put more simply, the value of commercial real estate properties across the board is now 11% higher than it was at the peak of the marketplace in 2007. So clearly, things are booming in the commercial realm right now, but the next big number of Q1 relates to the residential world. That number, 51. 51 different metro areas in the United States saw home prices rise by double digits in Q1, according to a report released Wednesday on ConstructionDive.com. That figure more than doubles the 24 cities who saw that level of increase in the previous quarter. So what have we learned about the real estate marketplace thus far in 2015? The value of commercial real estate properties has never been higher. The dollar volume of commercial transactions is approaching record levels. And home prices are also continuing to rise by leaps and bounds. With the commercial real estate market as frothy as it's been in years, 2015 is now seeing a huge jump in activity in the mergers and acquisitions realm. Along those lines, the next number of the week concerns big news in M&A. And that figure? Two billion dollars. That happens to be the price tag attached to the reported acquisition of commercial real estate giant Cushman and Wakefield by fellow commercial real estate services firm DTZ that was announced on Monday. DTZ had previously made waves back in January when it officially announced its acquisition of commercial brokerage house Cassidy Turley for reported $557 million. So this latest move makes abundantly clear DTZ's intention to join CVRE and JLL at the very top of the commercial real estate services food chain. It will still be several months before the transaction is completed, however, as it is subject to regulatory approval. But a New York Times article from the announcement on Monday pegs the anticipated close date on the transaction for some time in Q4 of this year. Now, while M&A in the brokerage realm provided the biggest attention grabber this week, Reap.com featured a video with Fitch Ratings MD Stephen Marks on Wednesday that reported the conditions in the REIT world are primed for the biggest wave of REIT privatization or acquisition of public REITs by private entities since the early to mid 2000s. Private equity firms and other potential REIT acquirers are reportedly building up massive capital reserves in anticipation of an active year. But private equity firms aren't the only entities looking to buy REITs as low yields on properties in Europe are prompting many foreign investors to take on more aggressive stances toward buying real estate assets in the United States. Keeping in mind that Q1 saw strong performance by the U.S. REIT index, which saw growth several times greater than that of the S&P to start the year, and also factoring in the fact that the House of Representatives has now introduced legislation to provide relief from the Foreign Investment in Real Property Tax Act, which essentially will ease tax penalties on the investment in and sales of U.S. properties for foreign investors. All that stuff in mind, we should see an increasingly steady flow of foreign capital into the American real estate marketplace. Now that's going to be all for this week, so thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Miles Bloom, and I'll be here waiting in your inbox next week.